I'm Stuart. You're watching Sinet Television. The Whelan Rotor Beam 6, otherwise known as the Orbi 6, has been around for many, many years. It's taken different shapes and forms over the years from Whelan. And uh, Chris actually has the current variation in his capable hands. And he's going to be disassembling it and showing you how it more or less goes together. Now, again, it is a halogen rotator light. And in this world of LED and high tech, you can't get it as more simplistic than the RB6. So let's, Chris, start right now. Take it away, Chris. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Stuart. Whelan Engineering's RB6. It's a really classic 50 watt halogen rotating beacon. Actually, it seems like for many years it really wasn't a fire apparatus unless it was dressed up with the RB6s on the rear for visual clearance. It's available in any of the safety colors, amber, green, blue, and clear, because really that's the only five that you can get it in, in the dome. The unit itself is simple enough, it has a polycarbonate top and a polycarbonate base, two wires, just a practical lead and ground to fire it up and make it spin and light up the 50 watt bulb, again, like I mentioned. But really, what we're gonna do is disassemble the unit the simplistic one that it is, to show you the insides here and the rotator mechanism that really makes this what it is. To start it off, there's a band around the side here. It's actually a tension strap. It's held on with one tight Phillips head screw. So I'm going to go ahead, get that out of the way to free the band up. So once the screw's been loosened, the band frees up. You can see it's a nice one-piece unit, plenty of flex, so it's not something that you have to worry about breaking on you. The dome just simply lifts off. You can see that it has a beveled edge here, so when it sits on the base, it's on there, lined up properly, and then the tensioner goes around and clamps them together. And as you can see, before I set this aside, there's no optics like you see in LED or strobe beacons. And really, because the rotator is the large size that it is, the bulb puts out the potency of white light that it does. And with the rotator spinning it, optics really, in this case, wouldn't do anything to boost intensity or manipulate the light to throw it out in different directions. So again, the simplistics of it. You can see inside here, it's a one-piece polycarbonate dome with a center-mounted rotator mechanism. On the bottom here, it comes out of the package with a side output harness. Integrated in the center here is a nice standard one-inch pipe thread. So if you're not gonna flat mount the beacon, you can thread it on to a pipe fixture. If you're going to do that, there's a sticker covering the base assembly here. So you can actually slowly and carefully peel it away like you see here, to free up the harness, to remove it from its guide channel here, and then to pull it from the center, or to route it from the center out to the side, again, depending on how you're gonna mount it. So again, sticker can be removed and goes back in place very easily. And also, it covers pre-done holes in the base of the unit. So again, if you're surface mounting them, these preset holes is where you would run bolts or screws through to affix it. Go ahead, place that back like so. The bulb itself is Whelan's H50A SN12. It's a replacement part that's very common, especially just with halogen bulbs being what they are. They're a bit more fragile than strobe tubes or the LEDs. And also just with rotators taking a bit more juice and not having quite the lifespan of some of the more advanced products, you are gonna have a bulb go out from time to time. It's just part of it. It's like the bulbs in your house, no matter where they are, how easy, how hard they are to get out, sooner or later the filament's gonna go. But if so, easy to remove the bulb, H50A SN12. The reflector, if you ever need to remove it, can be easily done. There's two screws right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, get those removed quickly here, just to free the reflector. And with 
those removed, just simply lift it up, and there you have it. So you can see it's just, again, one piece unit, comes out of a solid mold, and then is coated with a special high reflective material compound that Whelan uses. So it's on the front and on the back as well. Give you a bit of a better look at the tower that the bulb hooks into. You can see here that it's driven by, well, a worm gear mechanism for the rotator versus something like in a clock where you're gonna have more of wheeled gears. The worm gear itself spins at a set rotation speed. I believe it's 150 flashes per minute. I could be wrong, I don't have the specs in front of me here. So if I am, I'm sure the website will correct me as far as the flash rate goes. If you ever need to remove the rotator mechanism, it's easy enough to do. Four screws, hook it to the bottom of the polycarbonate base. And again, like the reflector, get the screws out of the way and the component will lift free. So this is the rotator assembly itself. If you ever needed two for some odd reason, replace it. It's easily done, can be replaced just with a removal of a harness connection. See this inside here. Set this to the side for a moment. And with a bit of a wiggle, bit of a wiggle, <laughs> comes free. Inside, there's the lead in the ground on a two pin connector going into a corresponding two pin connector. But what's kind of neat is there's two wires on each side. So you have two grounds, two leads. The whole purpose of that is to supply power to the rotator. So you can see there's one lead, the one ground, branched off from the plug-in connection, soldered on here. And then the other go into the base, which go onto base pins, so a lead and a ground for the bulb filament. So a really neat way that Whelan set this up, you have one connection, one set of wiring, feeding two sets inside the unit. In quick disconnect harness. So for replacing it, very simple process. Goes back in and it's actually a toothed connection. So there's only one way to put it in. So you don't have to worry about reversing your polarity if you take it apart and then when you're reassembling. So the rotator motor will sit back in the base. Go ahead, take the four mounting screws and get them repositioned. and tighten them up a little bit more here, just so it's nice and snug. There you go. Before I do a little bit more reassembly, I'm just gonna go ahead, connect the harness, so you can get a better idea of how the gear mechanism inside works when it's powered. Because really, when it's sitting like this on the vehicle, down back on top of it, the gearing isn't anything that you ever see actually working. You just see the reflector in the bulb. Bulb lights up. Rotator mechanism. See if I can't kind of cup that a little bit so the camera can get a little bit of a better view there. And also you can see just because of the gears inside turning, there is a bit of noise that that's produced. But nothing to worry about, that's just what happens when you have gears turning. Take the power away, bulb filament goes down, rotator stops. Simple enough process. To complete the reconstruction, take the reflector, slide it on. 
line up the mount screws and hopefully I can see to do that okay. The bulbs kind of got me seeing spots a little bit, but it's okay. When you see spots, you always know it's a good bright unit. So now with the reflector screwed back in to the top of the rotator mechanism, you can go ahead, take the dome, put it back on top here, and the tensioner band can go back around. Actually, what's great with the RB6s, unlike today's current LED products, where the diode is what produces the color and the dome or the lens itself is just an additional cosmetic, if you want to change colors, it's easy enough to do. Just take the band off, take your current dome off, put the new one on, retighten the band. So if you have ambers and you need to switch them to blue, switch them to green, anything that you want to as far as a change, the domes can just be ordered from us as an a la carte item to switch it. And the tensioner band has now been retightened. You can see that it has two edges here. So once the band's connecting, it's nice and tight. You can also feel it when you retension the screw. Just take the power, take the ground, and now that it's put back together, go ahead and light it up for you so you can see what it looks like with a proper dome. You can see, nice and bright, great spin, great light light up, and like the classic halogens, like you can see here, every time it goes around, the beam of light just throws way, way out. So if you're looking for something that's gonna project light, sweep it off buildings, off the landscaping, off the glass around the vehicles on the scene, the RB6 is definitely something that'll do that for you. So there you have it. Wheel and Engineering's RB6. In this case, this whole version in my hand is an RB6 PRP, just stands for permanent mount, red for the dome. So for example, RB6 PAP would be the amber variation if you're needing that. Thanks for spending some time with me here on SirenNet Television. Back to you, Stuart. Oh, sorry, I was just so mesmerized by Chris's expertise in taking that RB6 apart. Just joking with you, Chris, is that all right? Still go out for a beer afterwards? Oh, I there, think so. There you go. Again, many thanks for watching SirenNet Television. Even though it's a halogen rotator, it is nice to know that they're still around, just like vinyl records. And for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, that's a kind of a round plastic dish that basically you put a stylus on top and get some music from. I'm Stuart. Without saying any more to get myself into trouble, thanks for watching Sarnet Television.